Amigo, muy rico. Ah, gracias. Muchas gracias. So good, so good. Muy bueno. Like a fever, burning in my bones, a true believer. When you come in close, light up like neon, cutting your eyes to go, baby, you're a new song. Singing back and Today we're in Oaxaca, Mexico, and we're here to eat. This Oaxaca series is all about sharing with you some of the best food in this magical state. Oaxaca is one of the richest gastronomic regions in Mexico, and here you'll find food that you won't see anywhere else in the country. This is our third video from Oaxaca, and it's all about Oaxacan street food and unique Oaxacan dishes. Watch out for Oaxaca's famous moles, late night street eats, and loads more. In this gigantic Mexico series, we're hunting down the country's tastiest food and eating where the locals eat. You don't want to miss this series. Series. Get ready for some mouth-watering food. I'm Thomas. And I'm Sheena, and we're chasing a plate. We hope you're hungry. Let's eat. We're really excited to be filming this food series in Oaxaca. So the state of Oaxaca has an incredible food culture. There's a lot of amazing influence here from things like the geography, which means interesting ingredients, and the people that live here. There's a lot of indigenous people that live here. So you see some incredible influences in the food. This video is gonna be all about some of the Oaxacan specialties. So some of the stuff you'll only find here, and it's very special. Something else I love about this state in Mexico is it's very different to a lot of the other places in Mexico. So we've just finished filming in Mexico City, for instance. Instance. There, almost every video we did, in fact, every video I think had a taco in it. Here in Oaxaca, it's not like that. There is not going to be a taco in any of our videos because the food culture here is very different. The first food we're going to grab is something you'll find all over Mexico, and that's tamales. However, we're gonna get a uniquely Oaxacan version of the tamales. And this little stand right here, this little street stand, is where we're gonna grab ours from. This is a really special little place. Hola, buenas noches. Buenas noches. Uh, un mole en hoja de platano, por favor. Uh, Coma aquí, por favor. Gracias. Sí. So I've asked to have the um, tamal here. So they're just unwrapping it out of the banana leaf which is what makes it special. So Oaxacan tamales um, are wrapped in a banana leaf and then they're just preparing it for us to eat on the street. Wow. Muchas gracias. This is a really neat little street stand. So you've got to be lucky to get it as well. They come out about 7 p.m. Um, tamales you'll normally find in the morning or in the evening. So this stand comes out about 7 p.m. and when they run out, they're out. And that often happens very quickly, we hear. So if you're not here around 7, you're going to miss out. It's been around a very long time as well, this little stand. Um, run by a little old lady and now her family do the selling on the street but she still makes the, the tamales and this looks incredible. So what it is, it's the, the corn masa. So such a common thing here. I mean it's what tortillas are made out of. So it's just used in so many different dishes here but this is all the corn and this one's really dark because it's got mole in it. I'll get into that in more in a minute but like Sheena said what makes this one special is the banana leaf. So normally you'll find these with a corn husk over them so they've they take the masa they pack it with a number of these different ways that they can be had so maybe salsa verde inside or there's sweet versions and then wrapped in the in the banana leaf and steamed or wrapped in the corn husk anywhere else. So you can get the corn husk version here as well but this one is the really special one. So with the banana leaf and the mole together that's what you'll find in Oaxaca. So the mole is a chicken mole in that beautiful dark colour. So Oaxaca is very famous for its moles and what I'm going to do is touch a little bit on what it is now but later in this video we're going to have uh, some really big proper meals of mole so we'll give you much more information then but I can touch on mole a bit now so there's said to be seven moles in Oaxaca but actually there's hundreds if not thousands because everyone has their own versions. All moles have um, a lot of ingredients sort of 10 to 40 different ingredients. This one the mole negro is really famous here in Oaxaca and it's famous because it's got chocolate in it and everyone thinks that's why it's this beautiful brown color. I'll just lift some up. So look at that. 
beautiful colour in it. However, that colour does not come from chocolate, that comes from the, the chilli peppers that they put in here. So they burn them on charcoals, the seeds and the stems, to get that colour. So there'll be that in there and some chicken, but we'll definitely give you more information about mole later. But let's just get a big spoon, all that masa, that mole right from the centre. Oh, man that is complex. Oh, I'm going to get some more. It's beautiful. It's light. It's really nice texture, the, the, the masa. Uh, it's not too heavy. It's beautiful and soft. Uh, it's not stodgy. The mole is beautiful. It's uh, spicy. It's rich. It's just got a lot of depth in it. This is lovely and you get that beautiful natural flavour from the banana leaf being around it. Really good start and we'll definitely tell you a lot more about mole later in the video. On our way to our next stop we're passing through the Zocolo which is the, the square essentially and something you'll find in most towns in Mexico have some sort of central square and they are a lovely, lovely place. They're somewhere that people truly come and truly use. So lots of families hanging out, buskers and clowns. There's often a large uh, cathedral or basilica right in the centre. Incredible public spaces and a really nice place to hang out. But we're just passing through on the way to our next traditional Oaxacan street food. I'm really excited about this next street food. It's a traditional Oaxacan street food. It's a Tlayuda and we're grabbing it from this stand just right up ahead. Now this is a stand that sort of is sometimes here, sometimes isn't. We've come a couple of times this week and they haven't been here, but they're here tonight and it's packed with people. So let's go and grab a Tlayuda. Uh, un Tlayuda, por favor. Uh, contas, uh, contas ajo, por favor. Gracias. Sí, gracias. Con todo. I've ordered a tlayura with everything, so con todo. And that's the tlayura there. So it starts with a big tortilla. It's been filled with um, quesillo, which is Oaxacan string cheese, asiento, which is pork lard, and I think I saw some tomatoes go on there as well. And we've ordered it with tasajo, which is this cured beef, which is just grilling over the charcoals there. The smell is incredible. This is going to taste really good, I reckon. This is what's neat about the traditional tlayuda. It's being cooked over the charcoal, which is quite different to how we had it the other day where it was just an open um, tortilla with the toppings over the top. This one is going to have such a beautiful smoky flavour from that charcoal and it makes it really, really special. Check out how beautiful and crispy this Tlayuda looks. So I'm just going to open it up and show you what's inside. Woo! Look at it, it's steaming hot. So we've got it with the tasajo, which is the cured beef. There's the quesillo, which is the string cheese. I forgot to mention that there's frijoles in there, so refried beans. It's been smeared with the asiento, which is the pork lard, and there's a little bit of tomato and a little bit of avocado in there. This is gonna taste amazing. But before we get into it, I'm gonna grab some salsa, which is just over here. So I grab a dollop of that. <laughs> Con permiso, senora. Okay. All right, so a big dollop of that salsa verde over the top. Look at that. That is going to add a beautiful spice. This is a proper street food and I love it. So I'm standing literally on the road. There are buses roaring past. There are cars roaring past. I'm standing right by the store where people are tucking in and this Tlayuda looks epic. So I've sloshed a whole lot of salsa verde on top and I got some on my fingers and I had a taste and it's pretty spicy but that's going to be perfect with this behemoth of a Tlayuda. Let's taste it. That is brilliant. So you've got this beautiful layer of frijoles, so the refried beans. 
They have such a stunning flavor. I believe in Oaxaca, they cook the beans with um, avocado leaves. So it's got a really unique flavor. The cheese is just creamy and salty. That tasajo, the cured beef, has a lot of flavor. It's beautifully seasoned. Mmm. Mmm. And the smokiness, the smokiness that comes from that charcoal is sensational. Ooh. The salsa verde too is pretty hot. It's pretty spicy. Amigo, muy rico. Ah, gracias. Muchas gracias. <laughs> so good. So good. Muy bueno. <laughs> I just said that it was a really, really delicious, and it is. It's nothing like standing here on the street, tucking into a Tlayuda. It's quintessential Oaxacan street food. And dos chocolate, por favor. <laughs> Gracias. We were just standing here tucking into, into our Tlayuda and the guys came over and asked us if we wanted a chocolate, which is a hot chocolate. Now chocolate is very, very special here in Oaxaca. Uh, cacao is something which is consumed almost every day, whether in the form of hot chocolate or in the form of tejate, like we had at the market um, in our other video. Um, chocolate, of course, has a really long history in Mexico. It dates back to pre-Hispanic times. Um, the Aztecs use chocolate in ceremonies and special rituals. It's just something that is very special and Oaxacan chocolate is super delicious. So of course we had to say yes, which is gracias senorita. So look at this, it comes in a bowl and look how frothy it is. This is the perfect thing to be drinking on a night like this um, in Oaxaca because it's sort of a little bit chilly. Oh. It's so delicious. It's super frothy on the top because what she uses is this wooden um, sort of uh, stick called a molinillo and she whisks it and beats it and it becomes all frothy on the top. And you'd think that, well, you might think that a huge bowl of hot chocolate like this would be very, very cloying and sweet and way too rich. But this is actually chocolate con agua. So it's made with just uh, water and the chocolate paste. So it's actually uh, very subtle and earthy and it goes down really easily. I'm sure you've worked out by now that the foundation of Mexican cuisine is corn. Corn appears in some sort of form in virtually every meal that you eat here in Mexico. And we're really excited about this next spot because it does super magical things with corn. They use uh, heirloom corn varieties and they do everything from scratch in-house on site. We ate here a couple of years ago and I have never forgotten the taste of their corn uh, tortillas. They are just absolutely otherworldly. So let's go and get some food. It's great because the cooking takes place where you can actually see it. So you've got the comal, which is this clay uh, griddle pan really, and that's where they cook uh, everything. So they just gently heat uh, the antihitos, the snacks, on the comal and they slowly cook. You can feel the heat. I can feel the heat just having my hand there. It's really neat to watch. <laughs> The thing that really stands out here is the peacefulness. So they do everything incredibly traditionally, so they do it all to the traditional means. And it also seems to have a very village slash homely feel to it, this restaurant. Things happen slowly, it's very peaceful. Uh, the kamal is, um, is made from clay, uh, which is really interesting as well. You don't see that very often. It's just a really interesting, lovely place to eat, and I can't wait to eat this food. What I 
really love about this restaurant is that things take time. You watch the things being made from start to finish and it's just a really sort of slow paced, relaxing sort of atmosphere to be in. So like I was saying before at the beginning, this place is really uh, popular and well known for the fact that they use heirloom corn varieties and that everything is done in house. So they take the corn kernels and they put it through the nixtamalization process whereby it's um, washed and then hulled in a alkaline solution making it um, the corn able to be turned into dough and then they create the dough and then they press the dough and then they create all of these amazing food products. So we've ordered a bunch of Oaxacan uh, street foods here. This here is a memelita. It's a sort of slightly thick uh, corn cake and it's topped with asiento. That's that brown sort of sauce you can see on there which is uh, unrefined pork lard and then also there's um, some fresh cheese or queso fresco on the top. This here is a tetela, which is a triangular pouch, and this one is filled with frijoles, so the refried beans, a thick smear of that, and also some cheese. I think that's queso fresco as well, so fresh cheese. And then this here is the, the ese, which is a corn tortilla, which has been rolled up with frijoles, so the refried beans, and then a whole hoja santa leaf, and you can see See how big that leaf is. It's much bigger than the palm of my hand. So that should be really interesting. And then to go with the snacks, we've got two salsas. So a salsa verde, a green salsa, and then a salsa roja. And to wash it all down, this is a tasca latte. So this drink is made from roasted corn, cocoa, um, there's some cinnamon in there, and then it gets its orange color from achiote, which is, um, I think the, it's a spice, um, and it's orange, and it's the seeds from the anato tree. I want to go for this memelita first because these are one of my favorite snacks to eat in uh, Oaxaca. And I'm not going to put any of the salsa on it first, so just try it naked. Mmm. Mmm. You don't even have to taste it. You can just smell it to begin with. You can smell that corn. The corn has got such a strong flavour. You'd think that the pork lard would overwhelm it, but it doesn't at all. You can really taste that earthy, smoky corn flavour. And then you get the pork lard, which is really fatty. It tastes really porky and good. And then the queso fresco is really creamy on top. Mmm. Mmm. Super simple, but it's got so much flavor. I'm dying to try this, the essay. So this is the one with the big hoja santa leaf in the middle. All right, so it's just like a little wrap, really. Mmm. Whoa. Holy moly. Mmm. That hoja santa leaf has such an incredible flavor. It's really, really strong. It tastes a little bit like licorice or mm, a little bit minty. Oh wow, almost like sarsaparilla. The flavor of it almost tastes like sarsaparilla, sarsaparilla like an aniseed licorice type of flavor. It's really, really beautiful. And then you've got the creamy beans and then that perfect sort of corn tortilla which has got so much earthiness and smokiness. Whoa, mmm, incredible. And then time to get into this tetela. So this has got the refried beans and then the queso fresco, so the fresh cheese in there. And it's cooled down a bit because I think if I'd eaten this first, it would have burnt me. What I might do is just put a bit of this uh, salsa verde on there. So this is the salsa which is made with, uh, there's onion, coriander and tomatillo, which is from the nightshade family. It's got quite a um, acidic and sour flavor. All right, stick some in there. Now these, Snacks probably seem a little bit boring to you because they're so simple, but I promise you, they're simple, but they're so pure in flavor. They really, really stack up in the flavor steaks. Mmm. 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 So good. Adding that salsa was great. It gives it a, a really good uh, kick of chili. And then 
the creamy, creamy frijoles with the creamy refried brains and then the cheese just work perfectly together. And then again, the corn uh, outer is just so earthy, so flavoursome. It's just like nothing else. It's nothing like the corn snacks that you'll eat on the street at some, any old street cart. It has a real purity of flavour. I'm going to wash um, it down with a bit of this Tusca latte. So you can see how the drink's actually separated. You could get it with milk or water. We got it with water. Mmm. It's really refreshing. You can really taste that roasted corn and the cinnamon is very strong. It would not be a Oaxacan food video without us eating mole. So when you hear about Oaxaca and the food here, you hear about mole. It's incredibly famous here in Oaxaca and it is an unreal dish. We've been doing a bit of a mole crawl all around Oaxaca to find our favourite ones to feature in this video. And so for that, we've ended up at our favourite market in Oaxaca. This is La Merced. So this is um, not as busy and not as crazy as some of the other markets that are a little bit more central. It's not far out of the centre of town, only about a 10 to 15 minute walk, but you find it's only locals, there's no tourists, be it local tourists or overseas tourists. It's a lovely atmosphere and there are two different places here with two different versions of mole that we just have to show you. This is an incredible dish. You've Gotta check it out. Hola, buenos aires. We have gone with the more negro, so this one here, but look at all the different things bubbling away up here on the stoves at this beautiful little restaurant. Oh yum. Mole is an incredibly interesting dish because so much goes into making mole. So it's actually pretty boring looking. Um, I don't like to use the word boring because actually I find that incredibly exciting. You can tell there's something going on there, but visually it doesn't look like much. It's really what we've got is a chicken leg, the mole is all the, the dark sauce over the top, and some rice. And it looks like a bit of nothing, really. But mole is incredibly packed with ingredients. So they say in Oaxaca there's the seven different mole. So seven different versions of mole. However, there is probably hundreds if not thousands of versions because everyone has their own version of a version. So you end up having so many different versions. And the reason you have so many different versions is because there is so many ingredients in mole. So mole can be anywhere from 10 to 40 ingredients that goes in. So they, they put all these different things in and boil it all down, cook it all down until it forms a paste. And then the paste is used to make the sauce that goes all over it. And the more negro is arguably the most famous one because of this beautiful dark color and because of one of the key ingredients for mole negro, which is chocolate. So they put chocolate into it. However, a lot of people think that this dark, rich, um, brown color comes from the chocolate. That's not actually the case with mole negro. It's this color because they, they um, cook on the charcoal and burn right down stems and seeds of chilies. And that is what creates this beautiful dark color. You can see it's quite runny, really glossy. So after, after those initial ingredients, so the chilies I spoke of, there is always chilies in here, and sometimes more than one variety. So you might have three, four, five varieties of chilies. There's always chocolate, but that's when things start to get a bit muddy, and there could be any number of things in there. There could be raisins, there could be almonds, there'll be herbs and spices, and this is where you get variations. So everyone has their own variation. And when you're talking 10 to 40 ingredients, of course there's gonna be quite massive variations in there. So. Who knows what's in this one because every, everyone's recipe is quite secretive. Now the other thing I love about mole is you can get it everywhere in Oaxaca. You could go to probably the most expensive restaurant in town and they will have mole on the menu. Or you come somewhere like we prefer to eat for it, which is a fonda, a family run little restaurant right here in the market and you can get mole. So for a very different price point you can get mole. But of all the ones we've tried all over town, this one really stands out.
So it's come with a lovely little parcel of tortillas. So you'll always find tortillas with your meal here in Mexico. And we've got our agua de fresca. So this is a fruit water essentially. We've got a guava one, which is incredible. Oh man, that's just like biting into a, a fresh guava. That is very good. Let's rip into this chicken leg. So we've got this lovely chicken leg, which is sitting there cooking away in the mole. And we went with rice. We really like to have rice with it. And there's some little peas hiding in the rice. I'll just rip into some chicken, get some rice, douse it in that mole. So it's a lovely consistency to just coat everything. So it does, it's not runny enough to all fall off, but it's not thick enough that you can't just coat everything. Oh man. Oh. It's an absolute joy. Oh. So those chilies, the base ingredient, this chilies, they're the main flavor you get, but it's not too spicy. It's got a beautiful little, little spice. It just tangles away on the top of your mouth. Oh, and it's so deep and rich in flavor. This is just so incredibly complex. It's a dish that is just heaven to eat. And this is something that takes days to make. So it's not something you think, oh, I want mole tonight, I'll just make it. However, you do see mole paste at every market. Lots of stalls sell huge piles of mole paste, which sort of looks like the consistency of Play-Doh. So it's quite a dry, clumpy paste. So to, when you cook it down and add liquid, I think they add, um, like stock and broth, so I say chicken stock, to bring it down to this consistency. It's just so complex. Mm. Mm. It's heaven. It doesn't look like much, but it tastes like heaven. It's got everything going on, sweetness and a little bit of bitterness and spiciness and saltiness. I'm gonna grab some of this tortilla, just so I can Scoop up some mole. Oh, the tortilla is such a great plain vessel that even more so you get that beautiful complexity in that. It is unreal and I love this place's version of their mole negro. Well, there's a great section for where you can get, grab a meal. There's also lots of local produce. It's a really neat market to just wander around and familiarize yourself with um, Mexican ingredients. Hola, buenas tardes, senora. This is our green grocer, so we get all of our fruit and veg from here. So at the back of um, this market is our next stop. It's another Fonda, so another small family run uh, restaurant, and we're going there for a, another type of mole. Fonda Floresita is another place that we love to eat at when we're not filming because they do really just traditional Oaxacan dishes, um, home style cooking. Uh, we're here for mole coloradito, which is a different type of mole. It's a red mole and they serve it with their enchiladas. Hola, buenas tardes, Floresita. Muy bien. Buenas tardes. Oh, your coloradito is muy rico. Sí. Oh, wow. We're with Floresita in her kitchen and she has got her big pot of coloradito mole cooking and it is so thick and so vivid in color. So it's a deep, deep, deep red. Tomatoes. Tomatillos. de olor. Wow. de olor. Pan. Bread. Chocolate. Chocolate. Wow. And chilies. Ten ingredients in um, Floresita's Coloradito, and it just looks so flavorsome, so deep in color. And these are the um, tortillas. So they've been pan fried. And then they're just going to be dipped in the mole oh my goodness so in their most original form um enchiladas uh tortillas just dipped in chili sauce or in this case the mole and then they're going to be plated up so this is going to be the dish enchiladas con mole coloradito wow so you can see the tortillas are just dripping with that mole 
So she's popped a big ladle of the mole sauce on top of the tortillas. We've got um, some fresh onions, some ceboya going over the top there, a sprinkling of parsley, and then the queso fresco, which is the fresh cheese. Look at that! Wow! Muy rico, señora Florecita. Wow! <laughs> it looks incredible! This mole is going to taste amazing. So check out how red it is. It is this deep, glossy red color. You can see the chili oil that's leaked out to the sides there. Um, it's arguably um, less um, complex maybe than the mole negro, but I really love the coloradito at this fonda and then the mole negro from the fonda that uh, we just ate at. This one they serve with enchiladas. So basically just corn tortillas which have just been bathed in the mole coloradito and then folded over. And then on top of the enchiladas we've got a bunch of fresh onion and also some queso fresco, some cheese, fresh cheese, and then some sprinklings of parsley. So let's just get a huge spoonful of this mole sauce and that's all I want to taste. I just want to taste it on its own. Oh. oh yeah, that is amazing. It is very earthy. It's a tiny bit sweet, quite spicy, and it's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit bitter. So it's got a real depth of flavor. What I'm gonna do is just get a, uh, a mouthful of these enchiladas, get some of that fresh onion on there, chuck a bit of that queso fresco, the fresh cheese, okay. Oh, what a mouthful. Mmm. 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 That is so good. The tortillas are literally sodden with that mole sauce. And you've got that burst of the fresh onion, which is very tangy and crisp. And then the cheese is just really creamy and a little bit salty. Look at how the mole has just soaked through the tortilla. This is comfort food. Mmm. Mmm. The flavor of the mole is so intense. It's a lot spicier than the mole negro that Thomas was eating. And it's got, you can taste the layers of flavor. So you can taste the bitterness, you can taste the sweetness it's got a real savory hit oh this is fantastic and i'm washing it down with an agua agua de fresca so another fruit water this one is um agua de jamaica which is hibiscus flour so hibiscus flour um a sweeten a sweetener and then water oh, it's so refreshing it's a little bit sweet it's got um a real sort of tanginess from the hibiscus flour this is just an epic meal